All right, so now we're at session four. So it's gonna be exciting, I think, hopefully for you, in that we'll start to illuminate the figure with white chalk. So what I've got laid out in front of you here is a sandpaper pad, the white Carbothello chalk that I use, a stump, a kneaded eraser in the Japanese mono eraser. And I like to uh, clean them out with this uh, sandpaper pad and keep them on their own. Notice that the stump is very clean and it's only for the white chalk. So keep your stump separated by uh, individual uh, materials that will help. All right, starting in on the light, starting in uh, easing into it. Notice I put a little down and then I'll go back, see the, the difference between the two there, the stumps, and then I'll go back and start to blend that in. I'm not blending into the dark charcoal. That is not this particular uh, technique. So the dark charcoal the, and the uh, lighter charcoal are not going to be blended together. Uh, however, um, they will react together, but there'll be some paper separation between the two of them. Um, <clears throat> so now laying in the charcoal tone on the uh, temporal uh, region of the side plane of the head, that lobe there, and then we'll blend that in. And then you can see me start the, the particular technique of easing into the uh, light and the material by not going too light. Uh, by uh, more material and more pressure, the more uh, you will illuminate your light. So you have to be careful not to overdo the light in, in there. Notice I hold the pencil, what I call the more the conductor method, way down at the bottom of the opposite end of the lead, so I can really turn it almost to the side. And that allows me to uh, have control, but also lay the material pretty flat on the uh, surface of the uh, paper and uh, keep it pretty horizontal and I can keep my hand far far enough away from the image. I, what I don't want is an incisive kind of line like I would have in the pen method. In the palm method it's not really great for getting where I need to so I've got to hold that the, the pencil uh, chalk there uh, quite a bit on the, the back end of, of the of the letter, what I call the conductor method, like the orchestra or symphony uh, conductor would hold often at times. And so hitting these highlights, remember the light source is coming from the top left. So we're reading the light on the model and then we're simplifying our symbols where we, we need to. <clears throat> Throw a little back on this curtain here, start to illuminate that through. And you'll see me lay it in gently, let the texture of the paper work for me. All right, and then we can stump that through. I'll show you how that works. So I'll take my clean stump, or the stump for the white charcoal. And we'll smooth and stump that in. We want to make that too light. We'll put another pass on it. <clears throat> where it's a bit lighter in that fold there of the drapery. Take one more pass with the stump. Knock that back a little bit. Blend it, knock it back. And the less I take off, the more it starts to shine. But that looks pretty good where I have it there. And then we'll get one more little, little flick or two to give it a little bit of, you can see the lighter part of that. And it illuminates pretty well. We'll to work the back of the model's uh, head here on the drapery to, to kind of trap the light around the model too. We'll use those contrasty elements. And you can see the technique of drawing or uh, additive drawing and then allowing the stump to do the uh, blending too as well. It's pretty powerful and, and fun technique and very, very old technique as well. And you can use all kinds of stumps. You can use a Q-tip or you can use a charcoal, uh, excuse me, a cardboard stump, or you can use any kind of instrument that you really want, brush, possibly you could use that as well. So quite a bit of, um, uh, a lot of, of different types of stumps. But the main stump that we talk about is that, is that rolled paper kind of stump there. We'll put a little tone back here. <laughs> and we'll stump that down a little bit too. I'm not going to get too much of that background. We just want enough to, to put him in the right uh, frame of reference there as we focus more on mostly the, if not exclusively, the figure and then a little bit of the, of the surrounding. Just 
a little bit extra through there. If you want to go lighter, you add another pass, and then you can decide if if you want the more texture, which gives you a little bit more illumination, or you want to take it back a little bit, which blends a little bit through there. So I can use that Japanese mono eraser to dig out areas of the hair where I want more light to go. He's illuminating a little bit in the hair. Not too much. I don't want to go overboard there, but um, if there's areas where you have dark the dark charcoal and you need light there, then erase it out so you can work through that. You can blend a little bit if you want between the dark and the light, but if you do that quite a bit, then you're going to have a different type of technique. It'd be more of a pastel type drawing, which can look great too, but it will be more blending in that sense. <clears throat> So illuminating a little bit of that hair, then on the side of the plane of the head there. <clears throat> Just following where the patterns of the light fall. It's not very uh, bright. It's a lot dimmer than you think because we've already got a darker tone on the paper, so we have to be careful not to go too light. So. We're in the three and four range of value for the light, twos, threes, and fours. <clears throat> Start to work that neck over too as well, get that in there. It's kind of the right position where my hand is located. <clears throat> and we'll blend that through, softening that light, dimming it a little bit as we go. Take it back a little bit. Cheek there, the zygomatic arch there of the cheekbone, upper zygomatic, and then down the side of the, the face a little further. You know, technically, you're just laying it on gently. It's pretty, it's pretty soft, so you're you're not going to have to have a lot of pressure. I'm barely pushing down with the material, the the pencil there. See, I'm kind of noodling in there. I don't have a super sharp tip, I don't want it to be, because there's no really super sharp area. Maybe right in through there, but we'll, we'll stump that back just a little bit to soften most of that, except for maybe the tip of the nose. <clears throat> Getting a little bit under the nostril septal region, then around the curve, the curve of the mouth, the maxilla part of the upper mouth there as that curves and turns. A little bit of the bottom lip. You notice that it makes, it illuminates the, the mouth a little further and even the, the teeth inside were perfectly at the right value to begin with, which was nice. They put that in the dark cavity of the mouth itself, but a little light scapes in there. So we're working around the lower jaw here. <clears throat> and we'll start to stump that through a little. Soften some of that down where we need it. You know, it very much is like painting in a way. It feels it feels like it has a painting kind of sensibility and quality to it. <clears throat> we'll start to hit the thumb. I would say with the light, less is more. You'd be surprised at how uh, less you, you need. And not to go too light, too quick. To hold, hold on and hold off a little bit. Be careful. finger 
as it curls around. <clears throat> So coming around that palm area, turning that cylinder a little bit further. We can blend that down a little bit, or erase it. We'll soften that a little bit further, We're cascading across that palm area. Basically, it's a big, kind of blunt, cylindrical kind of form there. And you can take that point now. I'm going to take that point and I'm going to sharpen it a little bit, clean it off, and come back to that. Because you can sharpen your stumps. You can take your stump and sharpen it and bring back the tip if you want if it starts to uh, get really blunt or too blunt to, for your usage you can change that which is nice to have that so you can have you know, control your stump materials too as well Getting those tendons coming from the extensors, the flexors. The flexors are on the bottom, I believe. We're just trying to feel the structure. Let that back part fade a little bit in value. And we'll hit the couch a little bit where the highlight, just a touch of where they're at. Nothing too, too hot or heavy there. <clears throat> we'll work the top of the pectoral. Part of the chest there, right above the shoulder, to the uh, right of it, the top. And we'll start to cascade across the figure. I'll get some more face in here a little bit. I left it a little bit dark in some areas, but we'll go back. I'll go back and catch that. It's better to leave it and not overdo it. You can always take the material off. You don't want to add too much of the, of, the, of the light. It's a lot more illuminated than you think. We're just enhancing that around the nipple there. Little top of that. <clears throat> Coming down the side of the pectoral to where it starts to go underneath the deltoid and attach to the humerus uh, in there. And then the bottom parts of the lat. Very side of the pectoral in perspective there. Then we get underneath, with we get armpit there, the hair, that turn of the lat on the side there, latissimus dorsi. Here we go, correct that angle a little bit, a little bit better. Just a little bit higher, nobody has to notice, right? There we go. Working across the pectoral, the upper chest, not too dark, uh, light. You be careful, just a little illumination.
guess I'm thinking here is running my uh, pencil. Let's align it, cascades across the surface of the form that we're drawing. And it's not particularly meticulous. We're lighting, it, we're lighting that up, and then we're going to come and blend and stump. It's a very soft look to it as it eases and softens. You can see how some of the dark charcoal there mixes, and that's totally fine. We just don't want it to be a total mix. It wants to be a different process. But we're going to blend that down, stump that down, and smooth that out. And if, when you do, you lose a little bit of its potency, its value. And so you have to go back and add a little bit if you want that, which is, which is nice. It's kind of a, a Rembrandt kind of look where it's chunkier in the light and smoother as it fades and goes darker. As it stretches, really stressed there and pulling, you get the almost drapery-like quality of fabric. We put its skin, elastic skin. So we have that barrel of the chest and that twisting and turning. So we have that two cylinders there of the upper rib cage and then the lower abdomen and they're being twisted though. As the back side, the buttock is being twisted towards the chair and then the rest of the figure to the front is being twisted towards us. And that's the stress point that we're starting to uh, get into. That's, that's decently lit, not quite as broad as the arm. The arm is probably the upper arm from the shoulder to the to the elbows, the, the most dominantly lit form <clears throat> in the composition with the temporal lobe of the head, a little bit of the tendon on the on the other hand, pretty pretty well lit too, but we want to keep it more subordinated to mostly the head and chest a little region. Notice I'll go back a little bit with the mono eraser and I add light to that. And it gives me that nice reflected light inside the, sh the cast shadow too as well. So we're about 19 or so minutes in, into the video. So it's well illuminated already. Things are going uh, pretty well. Notice that I'm staying out of the, the darker areas. We're not blending, the again, the white into there, but we're working in the skin tone where it's the lightest, and then we'll stump down a little bit to take off some of the, the uh, dramatic lighting that, that can, very contrasty, that can get quickly, quickly light and dark if you're not careful with the the value that you're using. It's just just turning on some light here. It's not too hot, too blasty. <clears throat> Change camera angle there a little bit so you can see a little bit underneath that really nice turn that we're getting with the folding of the figure, like again, like drapery or a, a wet towel, paper uh, body towel that you're twisting and turning and really squeezing at the ends and turning into the 
to the center so you get that nice contrapposto. Very soft, gradual lighting in through here. It's not particularly dramatic or um, too overlit, but it's a soft, gradual, fleshy, Caucasian y fleshy transition here. Get a nice push and pull and turn. We want to light and get lit underneath the, the back a little bit more in the sacral area and also now coming up to the uh, lower middle lower back as well back here in the sacral area where the tailbone is. It starts about right there. <clears throat> Again, just laying on the tone and shimming a little bit to soften up the edge when I need it. So the light gets a little less shammy at times because it's more illuminating. A little texture is better. That's a it's a can be a stylistic thing too as well. I mean, this is very much of a, a Renaissance technique, broke and late Renaissance tone paper. Soften that in a little further, take off some of that bite, let it smooth out just a little. You'll see I work areas of the abdomen here to do that. Not pushing down terribly hard, I'm just dimming out little areas where I think it might be too light or I can soften a little bit just to gloss over that. And it helps keep it consistent as well. So now we were to work the more brightened uh, shoulder deltoid area. Here we have the top here, the deltoid and the medial, uh, excuse me, lateral aspect of that where it comes together with the, nicely with the clavicle and also the uh, scapula. It's a beautiful area of the figure, the upper arm to the chest. And you'll see me lay on the white chalk and then stump it. I mean, I'm trying to think about stroking pattern to work with the form of the of the area that we're drawing, or the forms that we're drawing, kind of circling, barreling around a little best we can, laying on the tone. See how textured that is? That's a fine look if you like that, which I do if I'm not using stump. But here we want to blend that, obviously, as we've, we've been doing to keep that within the stylistic range of uh, consistent, the, the consistency that we're setting out to do and to, to utilize. <clears throat> We'll get a little bit 
little closer down here in this view. You can see me turn that corner over on that arm. And we'll come back in the upper bicep here. Biceps brachii, two heads, two stems of the, the bicep. <clears throat> so we'll take that stump and we'll cover that same ground, but now we'll blend it a little bit. Blend it into and out of the current, the turn, the curve. Notice I'm not blending it into the charcoal, the dark charcoal. I'm allowing it not to blend, but get close to that as we turn that, that form. And just continuing to circle and, and blend, circle and blend. Make the same kind of gradual slope change in the arm. As, uh, as, it, as it appears to be. It's time consumptive and working the, it's, but it's worth it. So we work around the, the model. It's a mixture of drawing and stumping, drawing, meaning the adding, and then stumping and adding, and, and getting comfortable with that process and then seeing where you want it to uh, look and feel and finish. If you like it more smooth or a little bit more textured, but you want to do both. If you're using a stump, you want to have a little bit of both going. And you can gear off my one one uh, artist you can look look at is Pierre Paul Proudhon. P the last name is P R U D apostrophe H O N Proudhon, and French uh, academic, 18th 19th century artist. I'll do a 15 minutes with on him soon, and he used a, a stumping technique that was beautiful, that was very time consumptive, that went through. Uh, at least four or five major stages or passes of, of contour lining and stumping and contour lining and stumping until he arrived at something he, he was very um, happy with, which was very, very illuminating. It had a very, a very uh, a luminescent quality to the, the light and dark charcoal. And at times he blended the two together, kind of like a chalk, chalk drawing technique, which is, which is fun, like a pastel drawing, if you would, which is fine too. And we're using that Japanese mono eraser to get a little bit of that tone out and to get those subtleties back in where I need them or reflected light better through there. So it's a constant process of a little bit of both, of added, subtractive, and stumping.
You just see me continuing to work it across. It's got a nice consistent look and feel to it now as we work down the shaft of the of the arm. It's the most time consumptive area, area because it's got the most uh, white chalk on it. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to do. <clears throat> a little bit of that bicep upturn as it turns gets a little bit more light there. Not a whole lot more, but just a little we can emphasize. Keep going down the forearm as it's somewhat illuminated here. And you know how it gets bright quick because what's around it is darker. You've got that mid-tone value paper, which helps get that light going and illuminating very, very fast. Continue to turn, 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 turn through the wrist, turn around that cylinder and it gets a little boxier as it gets to the wrist. <clears throat> Work the top of the fingers of the knuckles there, the condyle tips of the carpals and metacarpals. Notice I'm using the kneaded eraser to dab and soften, but take out a little bit. Let that transition. See how it's a little darker in that upper arm there with the deltoid and the pectoral come and the bicep pops out around it. So I can see there's a little darker area right in where I'm dabbing. And I'm just taking my kneaded eraser clean. I cleaned it out and let let it sort of uh, sticky, be, kind of be sticky and, and take up some of the kneaded eraser, uh, let the kneaded eraser take up some of that material. <clears throat> Continue with stump blending. Notice how I don't run it into the dark there. We let the transition of the paper do the work for us. Keep that soft transition alive. It's a little darker from past the elbow down really to the, except the exception of the knuckles. It's a little bit darker because it's receiving a little bit less light as the light source was higher, closer to the head and to the shoulder. So we want to reflect that by showing that from elbow to end of the arm, or end of the hand, excuse me, it's not quite as illuminated, even though it's close. the vein a little bit. It's a little bit lighter in the light, just a touch. So just lay that on there and then stump it out a little bit. Get that to work for us. It's 
So this process, the 13 hour drawing is not super slow. It's not super fast either. It's not a gesture or quicker, you know, half hour, hour or two study. It's kind of a medium range, you know, study. Uh, some academic drawings at French academies uh, in the 19th, 18th to 19th century could take long months to really, and they were bigger, some were bigger, uh, but they would, could take a long time to render. Uh, and this is somewhere in between that, not too fast and not too, not too slow. I mean, it's, you know, made for, you know, instructional television, so there's got to be some reasonable limits, <laughs> I would think, to that. So that's why again there's a there's a full version that's sped up, and then there's the which is not narrated, and this narrated version which is sped up some, to expedite the 13 hours into about four four and a half hours or so, which makes I think good sense. Again, you could slow it down if you're working verbatim. You can work with me and then slow it down, stop it and work. That's how I would I would do it. You notice we get a good finger uh, uh, light relationship. It's not super detailed. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to feel like it's decent ways away from from us. We keep the image smaller. We don't want to get super detailed in these areas so that we um, give a false impression of focus and texture, which would which would put us in a weird kind of a weird spot. If we if we do that. So we're we'll bringing out that vein eh, just a touch more. Just a little extra there. The arm's working pretty good. I'm getting a little extra here to lighten up that transition as it comes around. That flexor. Flexor carpi. I forget the name. Remy digitorium. I always forget the forearm and the uh, muscles, both the forearm, the flexors, and the extensors, but they're grouped together. But there's quite a bit that torque and twist on both sides that work a lot like your calf muscles do. Same to the upper arm, especially the triceps. Anyway, we're getting a little bit now. I'm getting a touch, I'll put a touch of highlight on the thumb, just a little glisten through there. That's pretty close to what I want. With, with the hand. I'm going to bring down the forearm light a little bit further in a little bit in a moment and get to the fingers just to add a little bit of light there. Soften that transition over to the light to dark just a little further. bit on that index finger there. I'm going to pull back out. We'll tighten up a little bit. Tweak where we want. So I think it's working pretty well for us. It's got a nice stumped look, smooth look, and a little bit of nice slight texture there. So let's work a little bit of this chair, a little these highlights a little. And so we'll take out more material in the dark there that stumped soft charcoal which is easy to erase. It's kind of a triangular shape and we'll get a little bit of highlight on it and a little bit on the wood part. We just want to sketch for emphasis to you know, illuminate the model further and not fuss too much with anything else. So we'll add some tone here. It's pretty contrasty but we'll ease into it and we'll start to soften it and add another layer to get it to illuminate. It's hitting those little turns of the of the pads here so we get a little still life action going on. And some chalk there, some charcoal stick for effect. A little bit more. Just to get that transitioning a little. I feel like it'd be a little bit, little bit more intense right there as it turns. I 
I mean, these academic drawings are fun to do. I don't do them that often, so it's nice to have the drawing database as a refresher. <clears throat> bit of the brightest highlight that center part so it, it, it feels nice and integrated there okay so looks like I took a break on camera but I'll just keep rolling since it's fast <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about what we've done so we're ready to really eliminate a little bit more of the chair there under the, the head then the buttock on the uh, models uh, shorts and then the really the leg and then the feet. Now you're going to notice when you when you look you don't see it as illuminated or as bright do you? Because, because the light's further away in the model to legs so we don't want the light being as strong on the legs or on the feet as we do on the head and a little bit of the forearm or excuse me the um, the longer uh, elongated arm down down below so we have to be careful with with that and that's going to be uh, something that you'll want to make sure that you're aware of, I'll make you aware of it now, is that you know light doesn't hit every surface object with the same amount of intensity. So you have to be careful. So those objects that are further away will be, receive a little bit less intense light. We'll put tease out just a, a touch of light there on the background chair there. A little folds now on the the, the, the model sh underwear shorts. So Stephen is one of our former students. So we did not feel like he he probably wouldn't have minded, but we didn't give him a choice. We felt like it, he did not need to be nude since he was one of our a student I've taught several times in classes and also traveled with to Spain. It was probably best that so we have to be we you know very sensitive about that, and I think it works. And he did a beautiful job with with the semi-clothed and almost nude, which was plenty. So this is pretty soft material and we, you know, you don't want to get too dark or excuse me, too intense with the light or push down too much. So we're going to keep that very controlled. It's very matte and soft. See there. Just enough to begin to turn a little bit the model. Eliminate the buttock through the glutes, top of the glutes, and through there. We can see how we've contoured around. I want to continue that that process. <clears throat> Just catching that bottom of that surface there, get a little bit of charcoal in there. So notice I didn't put a lot on the buttock. That's about all you need. Let the paper do a lot of the work for you. Just want to illuminate because it's darker, that grayer tone. Want to make sure that's overall darker than our skin tone. Work the chair a little bit here. Work that high line. And that charcoal stick becomes a really nice kind of painterly uh, brush. Different nibs to it because you could turn it in many different directions. And we'll take out the rest of any kind of lingering charcoal to get that triangular curve shape right. Then it gives me a place to put the white chalk in. Can lay that in there where it fits in kind of nicely right in that sort of triangular curve. And then we'll stump it down to lay off the intensity, soften it up a little bit. Run the same stroking pattern, ease off on that. Kind of paint it through there a little bit. Then we could put a little bit of another highlight on there to get that little intense spot extra. Right in through there. Just a little bit more.
Get the tip of that chair a little bit on the side there. Just to bring that out a little further. Okay. Just going to take another quick break. I'm going to just plow through that. <clears throat> Back to our final run here. We've got about 15 minutes left, and we're going to work on now on the the lower uh, part of the drawing, the legs, which don't won't take particularly long. They're not well illuminated, and the feet, the foot there. And we're just about done with our drawing, <clears throat> long term, long term drawing here. That that area where the shorts come into the thigh, it hugs the thigh tight, so there's a little bit of a ridge, it catches a little light there. We can get that. Just go around where, wherever you're comfortable, however you get around the form, <clears throat> where you need to reach to, depending upon your, your position, it can be tough. But wherever you need to get your body, make sure you do that too in your hand to get to the place that you need to to get the right stroking pattern or right value. So kind of have to reach way over and across to get to keep out of the camera. A little bit of that tendon there, the biceps femoris, a little bit of the back of the calf, grass strap mimeus there. Curl that around, nothing intent, too intense, it is a little bit lit. We go too intense there. That crease is probably a little strong, that dark crease, we'll take that out in a moment. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry, we'll get it, get it back. It likes to pick up my hat. It's my Billy Gibbons, CZ Top guitarist kind of hat. And just laying on that first pass of white chalk, turning the cat, the astrocnemius, the calf there. Notice it's not as intense as the light in the front of the figure. That's important. <clears throat> Stump that down to smooth, slightly smooth that out. And I'll take my kneaded eraser and take off the bite of some of that dark a little bit, a little too much. We can run over that a little darker with a little bit of the light of the chalk there, just a touch. Gently blending. And tweaking and changing as I need just to get the subtleties there. It's a little lighter in there. Not by a whole lot, just a little bit.
turn the bottom of that calf where that cast shadow is, a little secondary cast shadow. Put some light there, then we want to turn, turn, turn that calf, really get it to sit on its side and turn downward. <clears throat> And we can start to smooth that out a little bit, or a lot of bit. Getting over the little Achilles tendon right there, as it's in foreshortened there and attaches to the top of the calcaneus bone, which is hidden by the bottom of it by the heel. And bring that over to eliminate the ankle, the malleolus there, the medial malleolus of the anatomical left leg. Turn that over. And we take that stump and we'll create the same stroking pattern around. It's very important, isn't it? How you stroke the form that you're drawing to get a cross-contouring feeling of that rounded structure. Put a little extra reflected light, just a little touch to illuminate it more, slightly more than it is, but I like that reflection there. I want to just tweak it out a touch more. <clears throat> Malleolus is getting lit, it's turning to the side, but open to the line just enough. <clears throat> and we'll get the rough calcaneus bottom of the pad of the heel as it's turned to pick up, well placed to pick up a little bit of vibrant line there. Then we have the strong pad of the heel kind of heightened by a little bit of the dirt from the floor that we're walking on a little bit, which is okay. We like that. We kept it. So we can see the footprint pattern and the structure of the foot on the bottom. That's so important to, to attune to. Let's see if we can get them into the close-up of the foot here in a moment. Hopefully we should have that. at top of the foot and then working those there we go working the folds there of the foot where it's lit the most just a change about a two value system there really it's not that, that difficult just want to ease into the value better to ease into it and make it brighter than have to take it off <clears throat> Just working the side of that foot there, where it hits like a box, it's where it's starting to turn down. some of these folds. We're not getting every fold of the foot. The major highlight. So as I keep the foot from a distance 
here from us, you can see that I'm just getting what I can see from that distance, which is about six or seven feet. That's the challenge with working from images, because we're at a slight difference than you would be just from just working with life, or if we didn't have photography. It's a very different ball game. So getting some of the major folds of that foot and slightly stumping where I need to slightly blend if I need. This also brings out the bottom of the footprint uh, further and gives you that bottom, that nice bottom of the, of the foot appendage feel of it. Same area there. Begin to see the little knuckle of that medial area where it turns the turns the toe. Just a little bit of light left here, and on the tips of the a little bit of the tarsal there. Never meant a tarsal. A little bit on the tip, just slightly there, not much more on the others, just enough. And we get a nice reading of the foot, or simplified painterly and, and expressive drawing of, of the foot there. So we don't have a lot left. It's just a little tweaking I want to do uh, on the chair or any other particular areas that, um, that are slightly incongruent, if you will, to me. Just a little bit of... Uh, slight value underneath, tightening things up. It's pretty much a done sketch for about 13 hours, so it's a lot quicker than the four I narrated, but I think that's enough. And so the, the idea is for to use this technique. Use it, do the same drawing, then do others, and um, develop your own feeling or sensitivity with the technique further. This is toned paper. I'm going to lighten up the head a little bit further here just to take it a little bit more about a half a minute or so a minute and a half left just lighten up and make that transition a little bit softer i wanted to go back it seemed a little bit dark there but you know you've got a good a good long demo and use use this demo and draw with it or draw another one and draw your own poses and study the light Learn how to make the technique work for you in ways that you might surprise yourself. So I'm going to just kind of narrate a little bit further as we end here. Um, here's the, the back of the, the image here for you, or the image here that you can use as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's, it was a lot of fun. And continue at it. Watch your edges. Edges are going to be a big big issue to control. Hard edges versus soft ed edges. All right, you guys take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.